Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this is part seven of an eight part little mini series. Here we're doing balanced two factor factorial designs with interaction. And we're looking at the random effects model F test. Now, as a reminder, the, the model, pardon that, I forgot to turn the light on. The, the model is y equals x star beta star plus epsilon. So it is a linear model. Now this can be partitioned into a constant, you know, the piece deals with factor A, factor B, and the interaction. Now previous videos, we assumed that the parameters were unknown fixed. But in this video, and actually in part six too, we assume that the parameters are normally distributed, all with a mean of zero, and then they have their own respective covariance matrix, sigma alpha squared, sigma beta squared times i, sigma alpha beta squared i, sigma squared i, and they're all independent. And then here, we're going to look at the distribution of the sums of squares. In part six, we looked at the expected values of the sums of squares. Here, we're going to look at the distribution. Now, as a reminder, we also derived in part six the distribution of y. y is multivariate normal with mean mu times the one vector and this uh, variance covariance matrix, or you know this variance. And this becomes important when we're looking at the distribution of quadratic forms. We have to you know, make sure certain assumptions are met in order for the theory to work. And I have a, a playlist called Quadratic Forms, and in there we look at the distribution of quadratic forms. And there's, I think, six or seven different theorems depending upon what situation you're in. And so here there's, we have a mean and we have a variance covariance matrix. So it's not I. <clears throat> so we're going to look at the sum of the squares associated with um, the factor A. And we're going to divide it by this constant. Now, the sums of squares for factor A is y times m alpha minus j times y. And this, you know, that's a transpose. So we're going to take that constant and just put it in this matrix here. And, and generically, we can call this y transpose A y. Now, for the theory to work, this matrix A times the variance of y, which is this big dog, has to be idempotent. And if it's not idempotent, then the theory becomes much, much, much tougher. So note that A times the variance of Y. Remember, that's what we have. This, is, this has to be idempotent. So A is this, and the variance of Y is this. Now, we take the constant and just bring it out front. And then we look at that matrix times each of these. Well, this matrix times Remember, this is a constant, so this m alpha minus j times m alpha, you get m alpha minus j back. But this one is, this is orthogonal to that. So m alpha times m beta is j, and j times m beta is j, so you get j minus j, which is zero. So that one drops out. This term, uh, this is a, the m alpha minus j is a subset of m alpha beta, so it projects it back onto itself, and then I times it, you just get this back. Now, if we factor out an M alpha minus J, right factor it out, then we're left with these constants, which cancel with those, and we're just left with M alpha minus J, which is an idempotent matrix. So that assumption of the theorem works. And so Y transpose AY is a non-central chi-squared, with degrees of freedom, the rank of A times the variance of Y. And then it's the mean of Y times A times the mean of Y. But A is M alpha minus J. And this is the one vector. And this projects orthogonally onto the one vector. And so, since this is the one vector, A times it's zero, so that's zero. So it ends up being a central chi-squared, and the rank of A times the variance of Y is the trace of M alpha minus J, which is A minus one. So this has a central chi-squared distribution with A minus one degrees of freedom. Now, I'm gonna just say, similarly, 
we can do the same for the sum of squares for factor B or treatment B. And we divide by this constant and then we get a central chi-squared with B minus one degrees of freedom. Now we're going to look at the sum of squares for the interaction term divided by n times, that should be a sigma alpha beta squared, plus sigma. Okay, so we're here. We take that constant and put it under the matrix in the middle. And we call that y, b, y. And now we have to see if b times the variance of y is idempotent. Right? So here is b, and here's the variance. We take the constant out front, and then take this times each of those. Well, this one's an interesting one, because it's it's... It projects it into the interaction space, but orthogonal to, to, the, to the space associated with the uh, factor A, factor B, and the column of 1s. So this times this is 0, this times this is 0, this times this, we get it back, right? Because this lives in alpha beta. So that comes down here, and then that matrix times I, we just get that matrix. Now, if we write factor out that big matrix, then we're left with this constant, which cancels with that, and we're just left with this matrix, which is idempotent. So that piece of the assumption of the theory works. So that means y transpose beta y is a chi-square distribution. So it has this degrees of freedom and this non-centrality parameter. But since this is the one vector, and this is projecting orthogonally onto that one vector, you know, with respect to the interaction space, this is zero. So we get, and then the trace of what we, you know, that big matrix left over is this, which we showed in, a, I think, part two. And so it's a central chi-square distribution with A minus one times B minus one degrees of freedom. Now, to do the sums of squares air over sigma squared, I'm going to do something different. Now, you absolutely don't have to do this, but I just want to show you that the theorem works whatever you assume. Some, some always divide y by sigma. And, and again, you absolutely don't have to do this. This is just an illustration. And then that becomes a multivariate normal with this mean, and then the variance is, is divided by each of those. And that should be a squared. Okay, so then the sums of squares divided by sigma, which is this, right? If you take that sigma and split it under these. Now note that we need to look at this matrix times the variance of this. So this matrix times the variance of that. That's I minus M, right? Because this projects orthogonally onto the whole column space of X. And each one of these are part of the column space of X, so it's zero. But then that times the i is you get i minus m back. But that's a property of the projection matrix, which is idempotent. So now we know that, that this quadratic form is distributed with a chi-square distribu distribution with this degrees of freedom and this non-centrality parameter. But remember, the, the expected value of y is mu times that constant vector 1. And this is projecting orthogonally onto you know, orthogonally to the column space of X, and one is a part of it, so this has to be zero. And the rank of I minus M, which is what this is saying, is uh, AB times N minus one. So it's a central chi-squared with A, B, N minus one degrees of freedom. Now, the test for treatment effect. So let's assume that the, you know, under the null, that the variance associated with the uh, factor A is zero versus it's that it's not. Well, and you can put greater than zero here. Um, the test statistic is the mean square for treatment A divided by the mean square for, for the interaction, which is this. And under the null hypothesis, it's a central F distribution with A minus one degrees of freedom, right? And then denominator degrees of freedom is A minus one times B minus one. But here's a little side note. So technically for this to be a chi-square, we have to divide it by this big thing, right? 
in order for that to be a chi-square distribution with the right degrees of freedom. Right? A minus 1. So think, remember this, so but under the null hypothesis, this is 0. So we only have n sigma alpha beta squared plus sigma. Now the denominator, we're using the um, mean square for the interaction term. And so for that to be a chi-square, we need to divide it by this quantity, right? But under the null hypothesis, this is 0, and we're dividing the numerator by this and the denominator by the same thing, so they cancel. So they, it looks like they're not there, but technically they are. So under the null, th this is what we get, and then if, you know, if, if f is too big, we reject the null and accept the alternative. So the test for factor b, so is the sigma beta squared 0 or is it greater than 0 or you know, not equal to 0? The test statistic is the mean square for factor b, for treatment b, divided by the mean square uh, for the interaction space, which is, you know, divide by its degrees of freedom. And then under the null hypothesis, this is a central f distribution with b minus 1 degrees of freedom and a minus 1 times b minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, well that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.